Hey guys, welcome back to Reignited. In this episode, we're gonna delve into everyone's favorite subject, electrical diagnosis. Stay with me. All right, you guys, you saw the intro. In this video, we're really focusing in on automotive electrical diagnostics. Now, we're only focusing on one specific scenario here, but it transfers across a lot of the electrical realm. So don't be too intimidated by it. It's actually fairly simple if you break it down, but also don't be worried if you are intimidated by electrical diagnostics. In fact, there's a lot of automotive technicians I know who want nothing to do with it. They want hands off, I don't wanna get into that. And in fact, that can lead to something called shotgun approach, which is basically you order a bunch of parts, throw it on the vehicle and hope one of them fixes it. Obviously, that's not good diagnostic procedure. And I wanna show you guys in this video how you can do some simple wiring checks to actually save yourself a little bit of money. And it only costs time. So if you've watched some of my recent videos on the 2011 Ford F-250 diesel that I rebuilt, I ended up having a check engine light on that truck after I got it started. And the check engine light was this, P06A6, sensor reference voltage A, circuit performance. Now that's kind of a long name, it's a little bit confusing. What in the world is it saying there? Well, it was saying that one of my five volt reference circuits, which the sensors run off of, it was confused. It couldn't read any of the sensors properly. That's all it meant. When it says voltage A, that means there's more than one. So in the case of the 674, there's actually three five volt reference circuits, but this one, the primary circuit voltage A was not reading properly. So in this video, I'm really going to break it down and show you how to diagnose a sensor reference circuit and show you exactly what you need to do to find the problem. Something that's extremely important when you're diagnosing a five volt reference circuit is knowing exactly how many sensors are on that circuit. You're going to need to find a wiring diagram that specifically tells you which ones are on that because your diagnostics are not going to be accurate unless you know all of the five volt sensors on that circuit. Okay, so we have our code here. We know that we have a problem with the five volt reference circuit. And in fact, it is evident that it's a consistent problem because the vehicle does not run correctly. In my case, it could not see the crank sensor and it could not see exactly how much fuel pressure was in the rail. So it would run, but kind of just barely and kind of chug, chug, chug along. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it down into the most common things you're going to see first, and then we'll start moving into the things that you are less likely to see, but can still be checked out. Now, the great thing about the diagnostics we're going to go over is that you do not need really special tools to check it out. Literally, the only thing we're looking for is voltage and continuity. That's it. And do you need a really fancy voltmeter? No, you don't. In fact, you can even just use a standard Harbor Freight voltmeter that you can get for $5 or even for free on some of their coupons. So as long as you have even a very basic voltmeter, you can do these checks for yourself. So notice here that the five volt reference voltage power is coming directly from the PCM. It is not coming out of the fuse box. So if you have an issue with this reference voltage, you're not going to find a bad fuse somewhere. That's not, that's not a direction you need to go. The power is coming direct from the PCM. And you'll notice here that this single power feed then splits off and powers several different sensors. That's why if you're having an issue with this circuit, all of these sensors are now blind because it's all coming from one source. So I've broken down the most common problems you're going to find here. Number one on the list, by far the most common, a sensor is grounded internally. Now, if that happens, it's going to pull the entire five volt reference circuit voltage down to zero and make all of your sensors blind. How do we diagnose this one? Well, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna show you right now. Now, again, this is why it's critical to know all of the five volt sensors on that reference circuit, because this test demands that. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to back probe your wire for the five volt reference circuit. So again, you, you're going to have to have a pinout of the connector to know which wires are which, so that you know exactly which wire is the one that your five volt reference circuit is supposed to come out of. You leave the connector plugged into the PCM, you back probe it with a sharp pin here. Don't spear through the insulation, rather back probe the connector with one of these so that you can test for power. You're testing for five volts here on that circuit. Now, after you have the back probe in place, go ahead and turn the ignition key on and see if you have any voltage here. 
Now, if the problem is active, you should not have any voltage here with key on. Now, leaving that plugged in to the voltmeter, what you wanna do is start unplugging your sensors, your five volt sensors on that circuit one at a time. If at some point when you unplug one of these sensors, your five volts comes back here, then you know that that sensor was grounded internally. You can actually test this by plugging all of the other five volt sensors back in and see if they still work. And then when you plug that particular sensor back in, it should pull the whole circuit back down to zero again. In that case, you know that that sensor is grounded internally and it's faulty. So you can just replace that sensor and move on. Now, let me be clear here that if you unplug all of these sensors, but there's an additional five volt sensor that you don't know about that is on that circuit that you don't unplug, it's going to invalidate all the results from that test. So again, I cannot be clear enough about this, that you must know all of the sensors on that circuit. Make sure your wiring diagram is accurate. All right, so let's say you've got this back probed, you've unplugged all of the sensors on the circuit and you still have no voltage at your five volt reference. So what is the next step then? All right, so at that point, it's probably not a grounded sensor internally, that's good news. Why is that good news? Well, because maybe you have to do some additional detective work there, but now you know that all of these sensors are okay. And that means you don't have to pay money to replace any of these sensors. So you're already a step up. Let's move on to the step two. All right, next step on the list, five volt reference circuit is open. Now, what does that mean, open? Well, it means that there's either a break in the wire or that power is not making it to the actual individual connectors for the sensors. So how do we test for this? Well, if you remember this diagram, it's all coming from a single source here and then splices off to each of the individual sensors here. So if all of these sensors are blind, then that means that the problem is not going to be here, it's not going to be here, it's not going to be here because those would only affect those individual sensors. No, if all of them are blind, it has to be affected here. Say there's a break right there. Then that means that power is not getting there. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the PCM connector and we're going to test for continuity between the PCM connector and your different sensor connectors because that will test this splice as well. If you do not have continuity between here and here, then you've got a break somewhere in this wire. And at that point, it's just a matter of tracking it down and finding where that open is. However, if you test for continuity here to here and it's all good, test for continuity here to here, you're all good then you know that it is not an open issue and we move on to our next step. So now we're moving on to our next step and as you can see, all the remaining percentages here are down around 5%. They're not very common, but again, these are quick checks. They're something that don't take a lot of time and so it's important to rule them out because if you skip over one of these, well, it could very well be one of those issues and then you've spent a bunch of money for no reason. All right, so let's move on to the next step. The ground circuit is not grounded properly. In most reference voltage circuits, the grounds for all of these sensors will come to one common location and be grounded somewhere on the chassis. Again, wiring diagrams are a great help here because they can tell you where those grounds go and where in fact they are connected to the chassis. Easy check on this one. You're just going to pull off one of your connectors from one of these sensors and you're gonna test for continuity between the ground circuit and the battery ground. If you have continuity between the ground circuit here and battery ground, your grounds are good, you're golden. So then you can rule that one out and move on. If you do not have continuity between ground and battery ground, that's when you really start to chase after your ground wiring. Where does it go? Where is it attached to the chassis? You know, I have had ones in the past where the ground was attached, but it was attached poorly or it was loose or something of that nature and that's where your issue came from. So again, quick check, easy one, test for continuity from the ground circuit to the battery ground. If you're good, move on. All right, next step here, a five volt reference circuit is shorted to ground. Same situation here. You wanna go ahead and have your PCM connector removed and you're going to test for continuity between this pin 37 
for your five volt reference power and battery ground. If you have continuity between that pin and ground with all of your sensors disconnected, then you've got to short the ground somewhere. And at that point, I would suspect that you have a wire that has been pinched or chafed or is cut and resting against the frame, something along those lines. Something that's important to note about this particular step, you cannot have any of your sensors connected. If you do have them connected, you're going to get a false reading on this. You'll think that it's shorted the ground when in fact you're giving it a path to ground. Now the number will be really, really high, uh, meaning that there's a lot of resistance in the circuit, but you're going to be confused because it's going to make you think that you actually have a short to ground when you do not. So again, make sure you have all of your five volt sensors on that circuit disconnected when testing from your power feed here to ground. All right, next step on there, five volt reference circuit shorted to power. Now this one is extremely rare. I've only ever seen it a couple of times and it's just, it's not something you're gonna run across. But again, it's, it's a very quick check to rule it out. So it's something important to do. Now what's happening in this situation is let's say you've got in the wire harness somewhere, you've got another wire running to another circuit, whatever it's to, but it's a 12 volt positive power wire. Now let's say at some point this wire became pinched or this harness became pinched and now you've got a cross connection between that wire and your five volt power feed wire. You would already know this because we back probed this circuit in the, initially in the beginning and you would see that it would have 12 volts on that circuit. Now, because it's a five volt reference circuit, the PCM would not know what to do with the full 12 volts on there and it would just end up with some gibberish signals on there. It may even set an entirely different code altogether, probably a short to power code. However, it's something we wanna rule out. So again, you've, you've back probed it here and we were getting zero volts. So if it were short of the power, you'd be getting 12 volts right there. So again, we were able to rule that out right at the beginning, not a problem. All right, next step, five volt reference signal ground circuits shorted together. Again, this isn't something that you're going to find very often, but it was in fact the issue with my 2011 F250. On my crankshaft position sensor, downstream of the sensor itself, the actual wiring, the wires themselves run somewhat close to the exhaust and they had gotten hot and melted together. So I was having cross contamination between circuits here and that's what was bringing down the entire five volt reference. And it was an easy fix. All I had to do was cut out the bad section of wiring, splice in some new wires, heat shrink, solder all the connections and recover the harness. And then I rerouted it in a way so it wouldn't happen again. I didn't spend any money on that. It just took me time. It took me about two and a half hours of diagnosis to just do the checks and really narrow it down and figure out that that was the cause. But the problem is for so many people, they're in a rush to jump right to the bottom of the list and say, this is a PCM. You got a PCM problem here because the five volt reference power is coming from the PCM. I have no power. Clearly the problem is the PCM. I see it all the time. People jump to that conclusion and I don't really blame them for it, but again, it's something that you want to just take your time and try to do things right. If you are having your vehicle looked at by a mechanic shop and they tell you, hey, you're, you need a PCM for this thing, ask questions. Ask them how they came to that conclusion. What tests did they run to verify that the PCM is actually the problem? Now, could it be the problem? Absolutely, I'm not saying that. I have replaced a lot of PCMs myself over the years that have ultimately ended up being the problem. What I'm saying is don't skip steps beforehand that are quick steps, easy steps, that you can then verify that, okay, I know all of this is all good, therefore the problem has to be the PCM. In fact, if you go to the factory diagnostics, this is exactly how they lay it out. They, they have you do all of the wiring checks first before you go replacing any parts on there. So again, that's my admonition. Just take your time, really go through and make sure that all of this is good first before you go chasing a PCM. So there it is guys, five volt reference circuit diagnosis on this. Electrical diagnostics are one of those things that are very intimidating on the surface. And if I were to encourage you to do anything, it's as you're doing the process, write down your results. Be very specific about it because it's easy to do something and then think after the fact, now did I actually do that the correct way or did I actually have that hooked up the correct way? And you start to second guess yourself. 
And that basically invalidates your results because now you don't trust them. So as you're doing each test, write it out exactly what you're doing, how you're doing it, and what the results are. That way, when you go through after the fact, you can verify, yes, this was the result. Yes, this was the result, and you can move on. That helps give you confidence in your own work. All right, you guys, I hope you really appreciated the video. I hope you learned something today. And if you have any sort of mechanical questions at all or something that you would like answered, I'd like to start compiling some of those because I wanna do a general Q&A type of a video that just covers general mechanical questions, whether it be with the Hemi engine or any Chrysler product, uh, diesel engines, pretty much anything. Let me know what you got, put them down in the comments below. And again, I'm gonna try to put together a dedicated video for it. All right, you guys, if you liked the video, please like it and subscribe if you feel like you're getting some good information, some good value from this content. Really appreciate all of you guys watching. We'll see you next time on Reignited.